Hi everyone and a very warm welcome back to the new Sandling Junction build and episode 10 of that build. Now since the last episode I have been busy down at the gallery and I've also been doing a lot of commission work so I haven't actually had as much time up here as I really wanted to do but I have been busy as well. So what am I going to bring you in this episode? Well I'm going to be talking about that lift out section, I'm going to be talking about some filming over there and what else am I going to be talking about? Oh yeah, I made a mistake, so I'm going to be putting my hands up to that one as well. So without further ado, let's roll the intro. Let's see what's been going on. Hey okay, everybody, and a very warm welcome back. Now, before we go much further with this episode 10 of the build at Sanding Junction, I have to make a confession and put my hands up to a bit of a silly mistake. <laughs> and that is that when I got to this point in the last uh, episode, I was thinking, how's this working out? I'm going to have to put in a reversing loop module through here to make this work on this figure of eight. And um, I thought the way my my track is working back black to the back all the way round, uh, it's just not gonna work out because at some point the black's gonna end up on the inner, not the outer. And I felt very stupid when a friend of mine who's uh, always keeping an eye on my channel and sometimes he makes a comment or he sends me a message and he said, Paul, you don't need a reverse loop module on a figure of eight. If you start uh, at one point with black to the back, it will come round on the other end and it will join up perfectly. And I said, well, that can't be. I said, because mine is coming up across here, black to the back, but it comes up here on the inside and it doesn't work. Until I uh, did it, as he suggested, I ran a two pens in my hand on a piece of paper. I went round and created it, and sure enough, it joins up perfectly. So it meant that I had made a mistake. And what the mistake was, fairly simple, but stupid. Okay, at here, everything is black to the back, red to the center, black to the back. As I went under here, at some point I'd stopped then was going to re-carry on later on um, in one of the earlier episodes. And then I came to put this mod, this area here, this, re this incline in that comes up to the bridge. Now here, instead of following the black, whichever side it was on at the point, I carried on with the idea in my head, black to the back. So what I'd done is I actually had changed all of these tracks to black to the back, when it should have been at this point, black to the inside. And that would have carried on correctly all the way around the figure of eight until it come back to here, when it once more would have been black to the back. So <laughs> all the droppers are on here. Now the reason the trains have been running and uh, you've seen the trains running in some of the clips is that none of these droppers that are in question have been attached to the bus wire. So that's rather fortunate. Now I've got two options. I can either, uh, well, one of the options is that the bus wire from here all the way around to here is separate. Now I can actually reverse the bus wire and just leave all of the colors as they, sh as they are. That's one option. I can keep the bus wire as it should be and without confusing myself even further with brain fog, um, and I can just reverse the colors. I can even put a bit of tape on each one so I know that it is now a red and not a black and now I know it's a black and no longer a red. I can do that and I will have a thing as to probably which is the simplest and most easy way of doing it. I certainly will not have to pull any track up. Uh, that was my first thought, but I will get onto it. Okay, so what I'm gonna talk about now is my new cameras. It did have quite a few good star reviews, so I'm hoping that um, I haven't spent badly, but 
some of the options for some of these were very, very expensive. But this one is, um, let me give you the details of it so that you can see. And so you just see me unwrap it, so I have no idea what's inside the box. But this is a seven inch wireless parking system for truck and bus. So there will be two cameras. Now I have no idea if I've got the right setup for this or not. I'm going to be very careful as I unload it because if it doesn't work or it isn't right, then it can all go back to the supplier. I hope it shouldn't be a problem. But um, I'm hoping that once this is set up, it will be fine. So we have a simple um, TFT screen monitor um, and hopefully that that will set up over on the wall uh, just under my sign if there's enough cable to do so that is that we have a camera. Now these are quite large cameras so I hope that I haven't bought badly because they're going to have to fit in here somewhere underneath. There are two of them. I'm pretty sure that once I get organized with them, that they will be absolutely fine. And uh, the two cameras, I think, from different angles will cover exactly what's down there in the fiddle yard uh, for future. And I'm sure there's enough um, room underneath to fit these and get this up and working. So what I'm going to do at some point during the course of this video is I'm going to set all this up under here. Hopefully I can come back before the end and show you a picture uh, of what's going on underneath in the fiddle yard. So I'll catch you all soon. Hey okay, everybody, welcome back. Now this next section is all about the underground uh, storage yards that I've got here on the new sanding build. And the first thing you'll notice is an awful lot of wiring through here. Now I tried very hard to uh, minimize the mess of it and make it look as tidy as I possibly can and uh, I think I've done a fairly good job but it is there for a reason and it's not just a whim you'll see it climb up the wall to there and you can see a seven inch screen on the wall there is one camera here and another one tucked up over there out the way and that is giving me a view under there but on top of that I have now also installed lighting okay so what I've got is two cameras and this seven inch screen now they're designed for lorries and coaches for security and surveillance and this one cost me I think it was 49 pounds off of eBay uh, or Amazon one of the two I will put the details of that underneath the description of the video if anyone's interested and if I can find the manufacturer, I'll put the lights there too, because they were easy peasy and dirt cheap. But this uh, is ideal. Now, when I first got this, it was suggested that I needed to use a switch to go from one camera to the other. Well, fortunately for this one, you've got a V1 and V2. So view one, view two. And all I need to do is quite simply that. I can go from one to the other and although when I first put this up, I did wire in a switch, but it had no difference. I couldn't work out why. And I realized that I don't need a switch at all. This is already taken care of within the uh, unit, within the monitor. So that is ideal. So now I have a view of these first five roads. And then if I go to the other camera, I can see what's on these extra roads on this side. And if I need to do anything, I've made it so that the cameras are not fixed right now. They are secure, but they're not fixed. So if I find in time I need to change their position to make a better position, then I can do that quite easily. But right now, I'm quite happy with the fact that I've got two cameras and I've got a set of lights. And you can see there are four lights on at the moment. There is one hidden here. I think, yeah, it's pushing that way. You got one, two, three, I think it is down there, four lights. And I can, on the little unit that I bought, have up to eight lights. I don't need four of them. So in time, these will probably die. 
a little bit. So I have four replacement bulbs for them as of when that time may happen. I can't take it further than that because I haven't switched the points over because I'm holding the camera and the controller and that's as far as it gets. Thank you everybody and a very warm welcome back and quite literally you can see me at a crossroads now in more ways than one i gotta say i have had this central lift out section in place here for many many weeks ever since my i think episode nine or even the one before and i have been meaning to get it finished off so i can literally lift it out now in fairness i have been very busy at the gallery and i have been doing a lot of commission work as well so i haven't had an awful lot of time up in the train room but i will also put my hands up and say that i have also been procrastinating over this area because i've got to do this side and the opposite side and i've got to put these um dedicated sleepers um to help with everything down before I continue. And these are from DCC Concepts and they are etched, soldered, ready to go. And you just affix them to each side and then cut through and then you're good to go. Now, I've got to admit, I saw Charlie's Chadwick uh, one where he had slightly different ones. They're quite interlocking ones, they're quite good. Um, I've had these ones for uh, a couple of years or more, so I felt that I needed to use them and not just go out and spend money on new ones. But, like I say, I've been procrastinating, not quite sure how to go. I was hoping, because these are joined, I was hoping to leave them uh, joined up to make it easy. Having seen Charlie's one where there are three and they're set up quite nicely, these are a little closer together, so will I be happy at doing that or will I be better off spacing them a little more and putting them on individually easier said than done but I like I said I have been procrastinating I want to get this done because until I do I've got to keep continually on my hands and knees to get to that side that side of the layout and it's getting a little bit beyond a joke so I feel the time is nigh <laughs> Rightly or wrongly, good or bad, I'm going to have a go at doing this this afternoon. What can be worse? What will happen? A new piece of track, maybe. That's all. Nothing really is going to go that far wrong. The decision I'm trying to make is, do I put three on each side, but leave them joined together for ease of soldering on the underneath of the rail? Now, these will not... Uh, correspond unfortunately unlike Charlie's ones his correlated nicely with his um, sleepers on the track these ones do not um, which is sad uh, I think it could be something that maybe DCC concepts can change in the future but it won't help me today so I'm I'm thinking <laughs> and that's where it all goes wrong I'm thinking that I will probably put three on each side but this is the problem I've got here because it's on a slight angle on each end I haven't got square track across so in a way I'm thinking that I will take sleepers off three on each side here and then put in as many as will fill that space 
nicely on each one. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and film this uh, horrendous operation. And I'm not going to film the soldering up. Well, I might do. <laughs> that could be entertaining anyway. And we'll see what happens. But the idea is that I want to get these down. And James from Donget said, cut through here and join them on here as well. And that way I've got a bit of expansion. And then I go to the other end and do the other end of the same thing here. Let's see how we get on. <laughs> and hope there won't be too much swearing. There may well be. Let's see. All right, let's crack on and see what happens. Yeah, right, I'm just going to do the one to start with. Just see how this works out. Ha. Huh. I'm just getting a few tools sorted out, but you can see this is probably the neatest arrangement for my uh, soldering equipment that I've ever managed to achieve. So please, on my behalf, be impressed. <laughs> but uh, I'm getting ready and cutting off the uh, appropriate amount of uh, sleepers from the back end of that piece of track, having measured out what I needed. I rubbed them up with the um, file, getting them ready. And I was going to put them in in one piece, but I then decided that they were too close together. So I decided now to make them as individual and then tack them in as individual units. So I can actually take these and solder them individually like this. It's a long winded, but I think then what I can do here is just gently curve that one there same on this one and i think we'd be good to go and it gives me the spacing as well maybe even a little bit more than is normal i think that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> wish me luck all right okay so what i'm gonna first do then having made that decision i'm just gonna come off here and as charlie did i'm just going to rough up the underside of this track so it's got something for the um, solder to hit and stick to I'm going to take that to there what I haven't done is I haven't electrified any of these all this set here and because I'm cutting through here as well I think that these need to have sets of droppers on to make that work so I'm going to do that before I do any of this I'm just working this out <laughs> and I think um, then I'm going to put a dropper on here as well I'll do the same on the other end so I will mark these Okay, so I'll leave that there for the moment. I have now got to cut and do the droppers and get all of that sorted out, drill these through, and then I'm ready to start soldering these on each end and cut through there when it's all down, and we're good to go. And cut through here, of course. Whether I need it or not, I've always tended to use a 12-inch uh, as a gauge to cut my dropper wires I think I said I need four which means overall I will need 12 let's just do four for now okay so the wire I'm using for my droppers is 7-2 multi-stranded so that's seven strands I think that's what it works out to and just preparing enough to do the very very first parts of this track although I will be doing an awful lot more tinning them up and getting them ready um, accordingly what I completely forgot to do is put some sort of mask on. This is not the brilliant one, but it's okay, I think, for this job. So having tinned all the droppers, I've taken the odd bit of sleeper out or moved them apart so I can then put some solder uh, points underneath the track. And I will say this in a moment, but I do always put my uh, dropper wires underneath each of the rails that way they are hidden from view when you put them in place and my holes are directly underneath the track for that reason and any ballast hides any wires at all 
But that's what I'm doing. I'm just literally sort of getting ready so that I don't have to muck about when it comes to holding the dropper wire. I simply heat the two parts up, they mold together, and as long as I've tested them for any dry joints, we're good to go. And what I'm going to start doing now is just drill the holes for the droppers to go through. They've been pre-marked, as I'll explain in a moment. And yeah, we're good to go with this one. I always put my droppers through underneath the rail. I know some people put them on the outside. Some people, like Charlie, put them all in through the middle. So it's one hole. I've always done it this way, which is quite simply, I put a pen on the rail, each side and in between, and um, then my wire is hidden underneath the actual rail head itself. I think what I'm going to do is tack two at a time, like that. I wanted to do this in little chunks. By tacking one side only, I could make sure they were right before I went across to the other side and tacked the remaining sides. That's quite interesting. So I can actually see the solder just running underneath, or at least I think it is. So it may not be perfect, but it's on those joints, which is very important to me, so that when I lift it up, that will be fine. Right, I think I'm starting to get the hang of that part anyway, but uh, yeah, all good, I hope. I'm showing you that piece and hopefully I'm going to do the rest of these and I'm going to um, do the other ends and hopefully I'll catch you at the other end when it's all working or at least when it's ready to be wired in and cut. Catch you later. So having happily completed the one, I then started work on the other two lines on this side of the lift out before I went across and do the uh, opposing end. But it was interesting to note how easy the solder, if you put enough feed of solder in on one side, it goes underneath the rail and bubbles up and locks in the other side. Quite interesting and it worked well. Okay, I really am quite happy with the way this one's gone. Again, there was a slight angle to the sleepers, but that was intended because I need them to cut at that angle and still be on the edge. Unlike this one where I went off a little bit, I got these better. I'm happy and I've got the knack of doing this now. If I put some flux down each side of the rail and then administer the solder in from here it runs underneath and just clips up on the inside without getting too high well hopefully that won't be any problems with wagons down the road and that's what i've been doing here just testing and nothing is causing a problem so i'm really happy with that this one is now done i'm going to do this third and final one on this side before i do any further on the other side Okay, so this side has been done and they're all soldered and they may not look that pretty and I'm sure there are those out there who would sort of agree with that. But I think I've done a fair job. I'm a complete and utter novice at this sort of thing and um, yeah, I think I've done a fair job. All the droppers are on. There are droppers on every aspect of this. Okay, so... That's all done, quite happy with that, and it's ready to sort of cut through here as and when everything else is finished. And the droppers are all in place, all the way up to this side. Now I did think that I had to actually carry on with this, but I won't need to. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, before everything gets tacked down, I'm going to quite simply uh, make a plan for these ones so that I can get those ones done. But the first thing is I'm going to cut it through the center here and then I'm going to uh, create a little gap there so that if there's any heat expansion it will not buckle up and cause a problem to this because the last thing I want to do with this is have to rebuild the whole thing. I mean what you're seeing now is just the initial part. This is going to have a whole raft of infrastructure 
and scenic and dioramas are all added to this so at the moment we are really at the beginning so I need to make sure that this is not going to go anywhere and so I'm going to cut through here trim off a bit of the track and then add some fish plates into that it's all electrified so I'm not really worried about that so that's what I'm going to do next and then I well I say I'm going to do that I think I will but I also might uh, yeah I'm going to do that next <laughs> all right let's get on with that okay Dremel in hand danger alert but this probably was the easiest part of this exercise simply cutting the track through the center to allow me to add fish plates and expansion perfect okay so both sides are now done that's complete this is complete and all I've got to do now is um, pick it all up <laughs> <laughs> well in two halves this half this half and so on and glue them all down and uh, then once that's all dried I can then sever them and I've got a nice expansion joint set up in the middle so everything is ready to go hey okay, everybody and a very warm welcome back well I have got to this point in the proceedings and all I've got to do now is to glue this track down in place let it go off and then I will be able to cut through the joints and as you saw during the parts of the video that I've been very very careful to make sure that the sleepers closest to the joints are right on the cut joints so that when it comes through the rail head will have a rail sleeper soldered to it very very close to the edge that way I will be able to um, give the railhead the maximum amount of protection when the uh, lift out is sort of not in place or when it's being put in or out of place but I'm really pleased with it all I'm going to say now is I'm going to glue it down and then this section will be complete with regards to that part of the construction and then I can start moving on this way with this complex set of uh, point work that's going to go on in this section bringing three lines down to uh, or three conversions of lines here down into the three tracks here so there we go I'm going to put the camera aside and uh, just glue this down okay I wasn't sure whether to show all of this section of the film anyway but all I am doing is quite simply gluing down my track now you've seen this from me and many many other people many many times so you don't really need a lesson into applying copy decks to a track bed or even uh, the underside of the track before it's laid down and glued but the one thing that I do know a lot of people do and I've seen it done and it worries me every time and that is that they let the, the copy decks go off quite a lot before they apply the two halves of the track and the bed to meet uh, and form that bond now I've never ever had a problem with copy decks causing me issues by putting it on while it's still fairly wet it still goes hard it still goes dry and I never ever have a problem the thing is that I feel that when you've got a bit of track if you wait for the two bits to go on uh, when they are almost contact pressure adhesive then if you need to jiggle them you do stand the chance of damaging Copydex. Copydex will pull away from its source uh, that it's joined to. All the time it's not disturbed it will stay hard and tight but it can be damaged and therefore you'd have to start again. Thank you everybody and a very warm welcome back and now we are at the moment of truth quite honestly. I've got to cut through these on each side so I can release this uh, lift out section. Now then I've just done a little bit of checking with my Dremel and the normal head that I would use would be if I can get this to focus up is this one and it is quite a chunky cut as you can see in fact you can see that there is quite a, a gap there where I just tried it on that part of the rail there quite a gap now the one I have been using is substantially a thinner um, tall 
It is getting quite thin now. It will still do the job. It is metal and it's got a diamond encrusting. But as regards the kerf, it's, it's at least half of, I can't get in the camera shot. The kerf is at least half of this one. The thing is, I thought, well, if I cut through these rail heads quickly, then I can go through the cork for this one. Well, of course, if I do that, I'm going to make the first cut even wider, which is a bit silly. So that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do quite simply is I'm going to come through here all the way on each of these. And that is fine. Not a problem with that. And then I'm going to come back in with a razor saw and just go through all the little bit of cork that's there. And I don't think I need to worry too much. So that's the plan. So wish me luck because there's only one stab at this. If I get it wrong, it's wrong. Okay, let's go for it. Well, here goes nothing. And as I said just now, I do only have one stab at this. But I was very, very careful. And I do have a long gooseneck extension arm for my Dremel. I think if you're using a Dremel generally for track work like this, you do need to have this additional uh, gooseneck, swan neck, whatever you want to call it, a ex flexible extension arm. It does allow you to get much closer and square it to your track when it comes to cutting through it. Now that metal disc that I showed you earlier okay, was exactly the, the right now? tool to use. I think the larger disc would have made a much bigger gap between the two uh, sets of rail. As it was, I felt that that was probably a gap enough. Now I've got to be very, very careful with the razor saw, but I just need to just go through. Aha, success, success. I'm just gonna trim off some of these edges just to make sure that they're not too bad. And I did notice I got a little bit too close with the other side on here. So I've got to be very careful and mindful of that side. All right, so when I put these ones, these sleepers, I've got them a little too close here. And although I've cut through, I'm not going to cut any more away. There'll be too much of a gap there and there'll be derailment. So what I've got to be careful of is that when I put this in, just carefully do that now, is that I have a system whereby I just, just gently pop that in there first before I drop this side in place here. Okay, so the cut through, and I'm happy. I've run a couple of trains on here. As I said just now, I did make these a little too far over. I wish I'd put these two, three sleepers slightly in, and that would have given me a much closer cut to this edge. There was a bit of a gap here, and I misjudged that. But other than that, it's not a big deal. I think that as long as I just remember to slide it in this way each time, which of course I will remember to do that, uh, I think we're good to go. Um, I'm really happy. There is a slight, uh, you know, the, the, the warping in the timber, now it's been freed, has sort of just gone up a little bit. There's a little kick here. It is very, very small. And um, I will, you can just see it. We can feel it more, the track is not in line, but it's not much. What I'll do is I will clamp these two pieces together to start with uh, when in use and once I've powered up the track and put the connectors in. And once all that's done, I'll find a way of, when I put it in, to making sure that this sits flush down tight where I need it to be. But all in all, I've got to say, I'm really pleased and Look at that. And I can just walk on through. <laughs> That's great. And I'm really pleased with it because, you know, I was worried about it. It got to be said. I've done this sort of thing before and fallen foul of it and it's not worked. 
but I think this operation now is done. And um, yeah, apart from that little bit of kick, um, I think we may even have a little bit here doing the same sort of thing. But if I, I have enough flap under here to play with, so I can just organize something to tie them down so that they don't kick. It's just the nature of timber. Anyway, I think that unless I can think of something else to do in episode 10, I think I've probably bored you guys to death enough on this uh, lift out section. And I'm really pleased with the outcome so far. And I do hope that um, in the fullness of time, I can show you trains running over here. And uh, I will have clamped that down in the interim uh, until such times as I have some mechanism. If any of you have got any ideas, don't forget, I've got to put a lot of infrastructure. I've got bridges and I've got other bits and pieces to put in here on both sides. And, you know, I plan on putting a tunnel support under here to here to here so that we've got a three road uh, bridge going over or underneath or four rows underneath three over the top. And then on this section here, I plan on putting uh, a, a sort of supportive line. I'm going to put some timber here and here. There's one there. I'm going to put one on this side and that will support. Uh, maybe a bit of water under here and maybe some arches just to give it a little bit of something and maybe a little bit of a wall through here. So what I'd like to find out from any of you, I've got, let me just take this out, but I have got this flap each side of my um, thing to support the bridge and it will have more support, but initially that's how it is. And the idea is that I've now got to find a way with a bit of help from you guys of a way of pinning this, clamping this so that when I put this on, maybe a couple of little pegs in here uh, just to hold it down if it's rising up to make sure the track is level and in the right position and it's not going to come up and kick a train off as it comes over here one way or the other. Um, yeah, I'd love to have some ideas on it. I'm sure there are ways. I don't want to make it so convoluted that it takes me nearly an hour of putting this bridge in and tightening things up, moving things around to make it work. Just something that I can register it and at the same time clamp it down in place so that I know that these rails are dead where they should be on each side of course. So if you've got any ideas, put them in the comment section below. And in the interim, I'm gonna start thinking about what I need to do next and it's probably over there. Yeah. All right, well, I think that I pretty much covered everything on uh, doing this lift out section as far as I'm concerned. It's got a lot more work to be done to it and um, we are, have merely just made it so that the track can be going across this area and I can then lift it out and move away but that question of tying down each end on that little piece of timber that I was talking about uh, for a registration and B to clamp it to that wood underneath would be really good if you've got any ideas I just thought of a small nut and bolt but then that's not an instant thing you know you could clamp it but then that looks ugly when you're running trains especially with all the infrastructure they want to build into this lift out and all around these areas as well so to me a clamp is just not going to work it's not going to have anything really to clamp onto in the fullness of time so i've got to find a way of doing that so if you've got any thoughts as i say please put them in the comment section and i'll uh, look at those and and hopefully pick one of them up to work with and do that to this lift out in the meantime, I don't think I'm going to get any more done right now. As I said, uh, this, I think, is going to be in episode 11. And I'm going to start going on round here. I'm going to be procrastinating again, I've got to say, because um, it's quite a complex bit of track work and point work there involving a double slip. And none of it geometry wise, geometry wise wants to work. Um, so... 
Uh, I had a lot of trouble trying to see if it would work and trying to get these in place. I hope I've managed to do that. If I haven't, then it may be that I come this way with the track, lift this off, start this again with a new piece of timber. It's not beyond the realms and it's a bit of time and it's an annoyance, but it's not the end of the world either. So I've got to get this coming out of here and if I get those few points in the double slip right, then everything can stay as it is. But that, as I said, that's going to come on in episode 11. And um, before that, I've got uh, episodes two and three to come up of that little mini diorama build of the platform. You remember in episode one, I designed it for myself and I'm really proud of that. I designed it for my Creality Falcon 2 Pro and I cut it out, put it all together. It worked like a dream, well, nearly. <laughs> and I've in part two, I've weathered it all up and made it look good, I hope. And in episode three, I've then gone on to do the ballasting. I'm doing all the scenics and I'm filming all that part in part three right now. So those two items will come out probably either side of episode 11 so that I don't bore anyone too much at any one point. So I'm just talking about it. Anyway, enough. Thanks for putting up with me. Thanks for watching this. It's not that exciting a video. I did enjoy the camera work earlier over there. I really enjoy seeing the trains underneath that hidden um, stabling yard, as it were, or storage yard, and just not even have to bend down to see what's there. They're all rare, so that's good. Anyway, enough. I'm gonna wish you all the best. Take care, enjoy your modeling. Get you all in the next video that I've put out in a couple of weeks or so. So see you all then, bye-bye.